Hey guys, welcome back. Well, uh, a couple of days ago I did a video on how to uh, take pictures with your camera and use those pictures as a texture file for your 3D model. And uh, based on that tutorial, I was asked uh, whether I could do a video on how to do the same, but then for a seamless texture, okay? And how can we apply that to our model, including the normal map and so forth. Okay, so let's uh, check it out, here we go. Okay guys, well right here to find a suitable texture. I'm in my backyard, as you can see, and uh, let's see if we can find something that we can work with, okay? So I'm probably gonna go with one of these rocks right here maybe something like this and there are a couple of things you want to keep in mind first of all you don't want to have any overcast if you have shadows on it it's going to look bad when you repeat it and you want to have it at the right angle as well okay so let's uh, zoom in on that a little bit get it into focus looks like we got the right angle so let's give this a go Right, so let's uh, take that back inside and let's see if we can make this work. Here we go. Hey guys, well, we're in uh, Photoshop. Uh, we brought in our picture and uh, let's see if we can make this work, okay? Now, keep in mind that for perfect seamless textures, you want the texture to be as even as possible because when you repeat your texture, you will see certain elements coming back. For example, this little pebble right here, that one, that one, and so forth, okay? But nevertheless, if you do this over a big enough area, you can probably get away with it. You can clean this up a little if you like. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna tone this a little bit. So we're gonna go to uh, image. Let's go to uh, adjustments and levels. I'm gonna go to my right uh, dropper right there and find something that is fairly white. And I think this one qualifies right there. And then on the left hand side, we'll use that one to get something that is quite dark for our black color, which would be something like this, okay? You can see that's a bit overboard. So we're gonna hit cancel on that. Let's do that again. We'll do that one, we'll do that. We'll use this slider here. And then we can go in if you like and go into hue and saturation you know just kind of what your personal preference is all right okay so now that we have this we're going to unlock this layer we're going to double click on it and there we go and we're going to go up to uh, filter we're going to go to other and we're going to go to offset okay now this is a, a 6,000 by 4,000 uh, pixel image. And already the um, Photoshop automatically uh, changed this for us, okay? So I'll just hit cancel and look at this white pebble in the middle here, right? And then I'm gonna go up to filter and I'm gonna go to other and offset once again. And as you see, that one has been moved down here and it is now tileable. So it took half of the horizontal size, which is 6,000. It took 2,000 in the vertical size. And with wrap around selected, it now took, um, it now uh, stitched four sections of that rock together, okay? Now, if you have issues with seams, and that's very likely that you will in the middle, for example, here and here, what you can do is you can right go here, you can go to your spot healing brush. I'll uh, right click and make that a bit smaller. A bit bigger than that, something like that. And what you can do is go into an area where you want to uh, use that as a reference, somewhere like here, hold down the Alt key and click. And then you can kind of go in and, you know, fix areas where you're not happy, okay? Like there where you have the very obvious spots. But be careful with that because it will uh, quickly be too much. I'm just gonna hit Control Z to go back. I'm quite happy with how this looks right now. I'll maybe do one just there, okay? Okay, so I'm happy with this. So the next step in my process is what I wanna do is I wanna create my normal map, okay? So I'm gonna go in and go to File and Save As. And I'm gonna save this as a JPEG and I'll call this 
rock. Let's save that on my desktop. Okay, that has been saved out as a JPEG for my color or diffuse map. And the next step is to change this into a normal map. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to filter 3D generate normal map. I'll give that a sec while it calculates. And here is my preview and I can tweak this if I like. So I can make that quite blurry by bumping that way up and you'll get this kind of really rough texture or I can keep the blur way down and make it nice and crisp like so okay and then also uh, based on the detail how deal how detailed do you want your um, map to be obviously I want it nice and detailed so good there let's see um, this is all good we're not gonna repeat anything just yet so we're gonna leave this alone and we're gonna hit OK all right so there you have it there is my uh, normal map so i'm going to go to file and uh, save as i'm going to go to jpeg once again i'm going to go to my desktop and i'll call this normal map let's call it uh, i think they call the other one wall so yeah let's do uh we'll call it rock so we'll call this rock normal map okay there we go and hit OK. And then finally, I want a specular map, and uh, that is typically a uh, black and gray image. So let's see if I can create that based on my normal. Uh, I'm not quite sure, never tried that, but let's see. Let's go to black and white. There you have it. And uh, once that is done, we can go into uh, adjustments, and we want this to be high contrast, okay? So uh, let's change that as well. Brightness and contrast. And there we go. And we're going to go into File, Save As, and I'll call this Rock Specular. Okay, and save that out as a JPEG. Once again on my desktop. And there we go. Now keep in mind, because I got comments on this, this is not PBR texturing, okay? I got comments saying that it's poor PBR texturing. It's not PBR texturing at all, okay? So just keep that in mind, all right? So now that we have all this, let's jump into Maya and apply the textures. Okay guys, well, we're in uh, Maya. We're gonna create a polygon plane to use as a wall. We're gonna hit R, we're gonna scale that up. We do need that subdivision, so we're gonna hit Control A to pull up the attribute editor, go into the polyplane one and change the subdivision level to a one by one. And then we can right click, go to assign new material. We're gonna do a blend, go into our checkered box next to our color right here. Go to file, click on folder. And on my desktop, I'm gonna look for my rock image right there okay and there you have it now you can see that it's uh, quite shiny because we don't have any normal map or anything um, applied just yet but that's okay we're gonna go in and we're gonna set the repeat UV to two times because I want to show you that it is in fact a tileable image okay and there you go now next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna apply our uh, specular map so we're going to go into our blend tab we're going to go to the specular slot and uh, let's see a uh, specular color right here we're going to hit our checkered box file folder and our rock specular right there there we go and we're gonna to go to the placement. We're gonna repeat the UV there as well. Otherwise it wouldn't make sense, two by two. And then finally, we're gonna go in to our bump mapping right there, go to file. We're not gonna use this as a bump. We're gonna use it as a tangent space normal. Uh, I want the bump depth to be quite minimal. So let's do 0.1. Zero point one eight. Uh, sorry, one eight. Okay. Maybe a bit more. Zero point five. Why not? 
Okay, so we're gonna go to File, Folder. I'm gonna look for my normal map, Rock Normal. There we go. And we're gonna go into that Bump tab. We're gonna check on the file here. Let's see. And I want that to be repeated as well. So we're gonna do two, oops. Two and two, there we go. And let's have a look at our texture here. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna put in a light here. So we're gonna go to create light and let's do a point light. Hit W to pull that up. So we can go in and have a look. Okay, and let's see if that looks okay. And it looks like it does. All right. So that's how that can be done. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. It's just a quick example. And uh, I advise you to take your time to get proper pictures, not do it as quickly as I did. And once you, uh, you know, test that out and try it a couple of times, you'll be able to get your own high res textures for use in Maya or any other application at a very low cost and you won't have to go out and buy them, okay? So hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Uh, please hit that like button and subscribe if you didn't do that already. And that said, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye. Well, thanks for watching. And before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.